Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art trip, and today I'm going to show you how you can paint for yourself this adorable corgi who is sad step by step in acrylic at home following along. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. Uh, he's going to make sure that as I am explaining a technique or demonstrating a color mix that you can really see what's going on with one of our robotic cameras that will zoom in. We are live streaming, so I want to welcome everybody to the live and say happy birthday to Lori. Um, it's really good to see everybody. I know it's a bit of a sad reason that we're coming together to do this painting, but I think that the painting should help remember help us remember all of the things that we loved about Queen Elizabeth, especially her dogs. That's I mean, I'm American, but for me that was mm -hmm. that was definitely what I always noticed was her headscarf and her trench coat at Balmoral with her dogs just being a person. And I always loved that. Mm -hmm. So this is from the most positive place it could possibly be. And we're going to really enjoy the painting. Um, there's really nothing to do but go over the materials. All right. Okay. So on today's canvas, I am doing a 9 by 12. And to begin the project, we have out ultramarine blue, Mars black, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, yellow oxide would work as well, cad red, and cad yellow. Now we have some other colors because... Uh, it was pointed out to me um, that Queen Elizabeth loved primroses and lily of the valley. So I'm going to add a few of those to the dog's garland. Because I thought that mm. would be a nice touch. Yeah. And would be pretty no matter what. Does that sound fun? I think it does. I think it does sound fun. Now let's yeah. take a deep breath. <sighs> Today we're going to learn to paint like an artist, which means we're going to listen to ourselves. We're going to shut down negative self-talk. We're going to empathize. We're going to remember that we don't have to be perfect or perfect artists or every brushstroke doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to accept where we are in our art journey, right? Can't have all the skills immediately today. Those are things that build up. We are going to be present in the moment. We're not going to live in the failures of past paintings or the fears of past paintings or the expectation of future paintings. And we're going to paint. You guys up for that? I am. And, and you know, Karen it just joined us, our Emoji Club. Hey, Karen, thank you for joining the Emoji Club. All right. Shall we get on into it and do a step one? Step one. Okay. <laughs> you got to love the steps for today, right? Let's all put up a, if you're an Emoji Club, put up a corgi uh, shortcake emoji for the cute doggy dogs. All right. I'm ready. If you're ready. Well, you get right into it. I'm going to get right into it. I think I'm going to use a big brush so it doesn't take very long to do that first step. Guess what the first step is? What's that? Paint in the background. <laughs> I'm going to paint the background a bit of a dark color. I'm going to use Mars Black and Burnt Sienna together and make a dark background. I'm, this is going to help me do a couple of things. When we go to the part where we sketch in the dog, or perhaps you use the traceable that's provided for free, um, you can really see that. And also, that will help us actually have better effects in our grass and our fur because we'll have that nice depth that we need. Doesn't have to be a perfect background by any means at all. It just needs to be a dark brown, which is why I'm using Mars uh, Black and Burnt Sienna. If you already had Burnt Umber, you might choose to use that instead. And guess what? That would be utterly okay. Notice it's super streaky and I'm not worried about that. That's because on an acrylic ground, which this sort of is, grounds are traditionally very thin and uh, acrylic artists got away from doing them so thin for a while because of underbinding. Um, some acrylic paints don't really underbind that badly and other acrylic paints do. So I do mine a little bit thicker. That way, no matter what you're painting with at home, you don't run into that problem. All right, here we go. Yeah, and it dry it too. Now I'm going to use a hair dryer, guys. You could just pause me if you're painting along. And something to understand, if you're here for the live or on the replay, it's okay to pause me. The live chat will continue in real time, so you won't be left out of the chat. And it's all right to just do this at your pace. Um, these That's why I love teaching this way, because these lessons are designed to be so that you can do them at your pace, your way. That's the other reason we put these uh, chapters in there so you can find your place again on the step that you were on. And also it helps you with the mini books. All right. I'm going to get my hair dryer. Okay. 
You do that. Whew. You got your hair dryer. <laughs> so, thank you guys for joining us. You can still hear the hair dryer right behind me. But it is not as loud as when I turn on her mic. And then it's like, ah! See, it's really loud when you turn it on over there. So, anyway. Thank you guys for joining us. We are playing around with all the electric stuff in the studio today. Making sure the buttons work and testing out new switches. Mostly switches and buttons. They're, they're complicated switches and buttons, but they are nonetheless switches and buttons. Um, yeah, that's what's been on my mind. She says it's, it's very, very wet, so it's taking extra time to dry. You can kind of see the sheen change there. Now, I, I'm not doing tea, though I should be in honor of this. I'm doing coffee. Mm. Which is which is the American version of tea. <laughs> I really love coffee. I think when we get over to Ireland, we will be drinking tea, though. I'm on that. I'm gonna learn to do it. I'm not gonna be like Ted Lasso. I'm gonna learn to uh, do no, it. No, I'm I'm totally lassoing out. It's just <laughs> I like Earl Grey, so I'll be okay. Especially Lady Grey. All right, I'm gonna take Don't my that, that, that. T square. Oh, you, you gotta do a step. You oh you got a corky step it. Step two. We gotta step two. <laughs> I love his little butt. So this is a T-square. It's an, it is a 12-inch plastic T-square. They're very inexpensive. You shouldn't pay more than 4 or $5 for them. Um, I know inflation has made things crazy, uh, but watch for artificial markups on places like Amazon and everything because the art supplies have been really trying to hold their cost, I've noticed. Uh, so watch watch for that. And profit profiteers, I guess. I'm going to come across, and at the six-inch mark, I'm going to make a vertical. Well, you'd think I was going to make a vertical line, and then I was going to not make a vertical line. I'm going to make a totally not vertical line. And then here, where it's nine, at four and a half, I'm going to make a horizontal line. Mary That's was hoping it's that. Hmm. Mary was asking if you use the same palette all the time. So I really, I used to use a lot of different colors. Um, I thought it'd be real fun to introduce everybody to different colors. But what I realized is it just created um, frustration and anxiety in new artists. So I started to limit my palette. And my palette for the last few years of paintings are the same. I think the only color I added this year back in was yellow ochre to give us a hand and occasionally you'll run into an opera pink of some version or a luminous pink, but it's rare. So as long as you have the base palette, which we do have listed, you should be good. Now, I've divided this canvas into four sections. I'm not gritting, but I am going to use this as a guide. If you're doing a traceable at this step, that's when you would do it. The first thing that I'm gonna wanna do is kind of get a sense of the scale of the head and it's really helpful for me I'm going to come up to not quite the middle part of the line but it's a little bit middle and I'm going to make a little bit of the head the top of the corgi's head as you do uh, they are a wonderfully large headed dog and down here I'm going to kind of talk about perhaps the muzzle a bit right as you do Come down on the jawline here. Now I'll put this in paint too so it's easy to see. Notice I'm coming back on an angle. So what I'm trying to do, this isn't that different than a human skull. Um, what's hard about it is it's not on a forward angle. So when we do our division of the face trick, we have to not only adjust for animal proportions, but we have to adjust for kind of almost a three quarter angle on animal proportions. And that can be a little overwhelming. Let's drop a little eye here because this eye will be a little bit lower than that one because again, three quarters. And we're going to say that there is, and I think I could even be further out. I think I could take up more space on the head. When I get this worked out in chalk, I'll put it in in paint and then that will really help me. Right now, this is sort of a loose sketching of what I think is going on. And then I come in and I get what is going on. Now that I have sort of the placement of the skull, I know that the center of the head is going to come down here. So how that works is it comes down on a little bounce. Oh, I have my own coffee. 
<laughs> this was fresh. <laughs> I have coffee everywhere. I'll drink it all. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to put a little bit of a bow to this part of the forward part of the head. And the reason that I'm doing that is because they have such a dished forehead. I'm going to come down to where the nose is. And the nose is fairly substantial, right? So we don't want to short a sniffly sniffers. We want the sniffly sniffers to be fairly well adjusted. And then I'm going to come across here, but I'm going to make sure that I kind of bow this. And the reason I'm going to kind of bow this is the skull is round. So that's how I'm going to get that placement, right? And this will let me sort of adjust some of these lines a bit. The big ones will be making sure that I have substantial, adorable ears going off. If you are free handing this in, instead of using the traceable, one thing I can tell you that, that you will find very relieving is that the crown will uh, do nice work on um, hiding any boo-boos. Got a little bit of fur coming off the edge here. Oh, now I can already see that where my ear is going out, I've got to bring this out over and pull this in a bit. So that's why I like to use chalk because it allows me to work what I've got going on a little bit better. Again, because we have the face slightly turned. All right, and then we're definitely from this ear going back, going to have a uh, sort of an implied out of focus dog body. On the nose, come straight across here, down a good bit. And you can kind of see where our nostrils have to be since we divided the skull. I showed this trick to my daughter, Luna Bella once, and she has used it successfully on every art project she's ever done. Like that kid has taken this idea and gone way beyond where I, her mother, have ever lived. It's, it's pretty astounding to watch, actually. Now, the eye here, I'm going to put right here at this line. See how I use the divider lines? The, the, the main eye is right at our center of the canvas. <coughs> right? So that's right at that center of the canvas. But this eye is just a hair up. It's so strange, but it is just a hair up. And then round out. Because, you know, I can't do anything unless I do my extreme little Sherpa eyes. All right, I'm going to come here. Doing so well. I actually like how this sketched in quite a lot today. This is really goes well with our big art quest all about dogs. Yeah. This will definitely fit in with that. And you're, and you're welcome to... I'm making sure our little muzzle is exaggerated enough because Corgis, again, they're all tummy. They run by their tummies. Let's sketch that in a little bit with paint so it's easy for us to see in the step photograph. I'm going to use a little bit of white, black, and ultramarine blue. Makes a nice kind of neutral gray. And I will sketch this in so when we write the mini book, uh, we'll have this as a nice visible reference to where those structure lines were. But hopefully seeing this process kind of gave you guys an idea about how you might sketch a dog's head a little more, especially if it's not facing directly at you. Yeah, I think that'd be very helpful. These things just take time and practice. Don't be hard on yourselves about them. You can kind of really see that he is, she is, whoever they are, <laughs> doing so, quite well. I don't remember... Uh, so I know um, at the time of her passing, Elizabeth had two corgis. But she's had many corgis in her life. Gummy Girl was asking if you really think this is suitable for, like, beginners. This is suitable for you as a beginner to watch. But beginners come in stages, right? So uh, 
the thing is a lot of times uh, we forget that being at the beginning, we think it's like a one and done thing, but it's actually kind of a journey. And I call this in my three hoot classes, which means it's going to be longer. There's going to be more layers. I'm going to use more tools. The techniques are all simple enough, but feeling confident in them. I generally think here is like if you've done my beginner acrylic painting course and you have pulled off a couple two hoots a little dark, bigger question be like able to do this but i do think for beginners this is worth watching because you are actually learning to paint right now your mirror neurons are observing what i'm doing and they're taking it in so as your skills develop this information will be here for you we're Let's, like built as humans to learn this way yeah we're actually built we really are designed as humans to learn this way so you can see i've Giving myself sort of a general little sketch. I know where my puppers is now, don't I? I know where this cutie pie is. And you know we're going to go so big into eyes. So big. It's going to be, everything is going to be eyes, 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 isn't it? All right. So hopefully that answers your question about being a beginner. And I want you to really enjoy this process. You can paint along. It doesn't have to go all smoothly because you're still learning about it. You're still learning to control your load, your brush, your brush pressure. All of those things if all of those words seem really crazy boom hop into my beginner acrylic painting course it is like years worth of art packed into one short little course and we use few materials few brushes but we introduce you to all these concepts and terms in a way that when regular artists are talking you'll be like oh, I know what all that means right because that's the hardest part is figuring out what all these words mean now, you guys are capable you can do anything but sometimes the words are crazy Titch, touch, lift it, knock it back, all these strange terms. <laughs> it's almost going to be a Daft Punk video in a minute. Huh? It's going to be a Daft Punk song in a minute. I mean, we could do one. Like technologic. I'm too handy my coffee. How ridiculous is that? Okay. <laughs> Are we in a step? We're in a step. <laughs> all right, let me give them a step button. You know, it's really interesting. Um, they decided to put the uh, downstream key button. Mm -hmm. right next to the on air button it's like one away oh my goodness. <laughs> so a mistaken red button push and we're off the air <laughs> that seems like a design flaw yeah i'm, I'm gonna I'm miss gonna my palette that. a little bit just to keep my paint fresh i'm gonna map that to another surface this is just a cheap facial mister off of amazon it doesn't leave any big droplets on your paint it's just nice let me know when we're there babe we're there all right we we, we so gave I'm going to use something called a hog bristle brush. This particular one is a number 18 Raphael Artini. If you want to see these, they are on my Amazon store, uh, Jerry's and, oh gosh, I imagine uh, Texas Art Supply. A lot of places carry them. Um, but this is what I'm using. You could also use uh, anything from the Simply Simmons line. It would be like a number eight in this line. So uh, if, you're, if you've got some budget concerns, this is the budget brush I, I am recommending. Ah. All right. Now, we've got to kind of do some fady fady in the background. So guess what color we're going to put out right now? Hmm. Phthalo green. Fady fady is going to be nice. There's a bit of bokeh in this picture where some of it is uh, out of focus and some of it is in focus. So it's very important. I'm going to take my phthalo green over. And my th burnt sienna together. See, I'm taking the burnt sienna over to the phthalo green, mm -hmm. and I mix kind of a deep green. This takes the crazy saturation and come up to this uh, right upper corner. And on the toe of this brush, I don't have a huge amount of water. I'm going to just sort of paint in a dark value. I can add a little yellow coming down. And where I want it to be soft, I'm going to just lift up my brush on the pressure. I, see. I don't want a lot of pressure over here. I just did the craziest thing in the world. Who caught it? What did you do? This is so live. Are you guys ready? I just made a huge mistake. Who caught uh... it? Who caught it? I'll see. I'll and go look. I'll go look. I'm. I'm all like. I said it was an eight by eight, and I pulled out a oh. nine by twelve. 
You did. I was wondering. I was like, I was just wondering why there's more ear. You reframed it. You gave it more ear on the side. Do you want an eight by eight? No, no, we're good. You're you just, know what? Stuff happens in art. Let me show you how I survived this. <laughs> so if you did it on an eight by eight. You would just have less dog and green on either side. <laughs> oh my goodness! Who was yelling at us and we weren't hearing them? I'm adding a little more. Well, I'm gonna yellow. go over and look. I didn't. I didn't see anything in. <laughs> And so far, if you were seeing it, you were not crazy. It was us. I'm going to continue I'm adding a little more thalo green. Um, wow. Uh, Lubel. Uh, <laughs> more brown as I come. Lubel down. says that it was a nine. You said nine by twelve. So early on, maybe you just put eight by eight in the description. It was in the description in the announcement where I put it out on the Facebook event. And if you're very new here. I am human. I don't often do this, but it does on occasion happen, especially on a live. And the only thing I can tell you is my feedback from my community, the people and you guys who've been here for a minute, you, you shout up and let them know. Sometimes my mistakes are the biggest gift I can give to my community <laughs> <laughs> because I have to figure out how to fix it. And that can happen to you. So hmm, nine by 12, I guess, I guess the Corgi needed to be bigger. You needed more of you need to see just, more of the corgi is what it is. I think there was just there was room there was there was you needed to give this corgi latitude. I was like, this just wasn't working for my brain, and then my art. See, this is where you listen to your art brain. I'm so used to listening to my art brain and not my analytical brain that when I do something like this, it just fixes it for me. It's like this is how much ear you have, and I'm like, okay, I trust you, and I don't even question like why it's different. <laughs> I just go with it. It's such a strange thing. I'm still on the toe of my brush. I hope I hope it didn't throw anybody too much, and if it did, please don't feel frustrated. Art is made to help you be calmer and enjoy your life. Let's add a little white to that green. They seem to be rolling with it pretty good. Okay. It seems to be okay. For the video purposes, it'll be just fine. It's just, you know, for your painting along purposes, if you were following the Facebook event or got the text notification, you'd be like, oh, here's the thing. I use 8x8, 9x12, 16x20, 11x14. Very rarely a different size canvas. And most of them are 8x8 and 9x12. So if you bought an 8x8, eight eight, wait a second. I have thousands of videos with those and probably a matching dog one. So silly me. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my blue to my black. This makes kind of a Payne's gray. And I'm going to go ahead and get some white into it. Come here and it's kind of in the distance. Maybe a little more gray. Add oh. some of that white. And I might come here. And just add a little bit of it. It's it's it is out of focus, so it shouldn't pull her eye. Cherry it, is waiting for more of your soap. <laughs> just me. I'm so sorry. It's I have to make it. This is literally what it is. When we move, one of the things that throws us off is our ability because to make the soap, I've got to, I'm almost gonna have to just release the formula. And let you guys make it at home. Show, maybe maybe it'd be easier to make one small video on how to make soap. We could make a how to make soap booklet. Little book. You we could do that. Could we do a booklet? And would a booklet what? help? And would probably what would probably be useful is if we just mixed up the essential oils and sold those in small amounts and let people do their own soap. Yeah. Because we could probably do that pretty easy. Yeah. We're just thinking out loud, folks. We're just thinking out loud. We're not we promising anything. Know. I'm adding a little yellow and a little green, kind of getting a bright green, kind of put it right here. But there's plans. Soaps, soap is in the conversational of what we're going to be doing more of in the future. But I, I promise you. Brown and green again. Like, <clears throat> come this time next month, you'll see all the new stuff we're doing on the website and be like, oh, gotcha. See why you guys were a little tied up. This is pretty cool. Excuse me for a second. I'm going to correct something here. I'm going to just move this little ear in a bit. Uh. Just, It's not a big move in, but it will bother me later. See, I just moved it in. Whenever I have to change a line on one of these paint sketches, this is how I do it. 
and I will go ahead and make a traceable for nine by twelve now too. <laughs> Ain't either one. Let's go on a step. Is any, did everybody just unsubscribe? <laughs> no, I, this is awesome. There's like they're like, oh yeah, no, this is good. The soap idea is good. They're like, oh no, this is. Uh... <sighs> Are you ready for a step or are we still? I think I'm ready for a step. You, you, this, this... I question my reality, but I think I'm ready for a step. <laughs> Bing! Look at that. Four. Step Let's down. block in the puppy. Let's block it in. I'm going to use um, a synthetic so you can kind of see that working right now. You don't have to. You could keep using the same brush or you can. You have a synthetic. This is the number eight Simply Simmons in the Extra Firm Synthetic. At the back, what I'm going to first do is I'm going to make some orange, guys. And then I'm going to get a little bit of my brown involved. Let's come to the back. And we're going to say that back here... In the out of focus distance, use a corgi butt. We know we've got a minute to have a corgi butt. So, and I'm going to come in with a little bit of black and brown and kind of maybe darken this back end here. I'm kind of blending it into the wet paint. Can you guys see how that's happening? Now, still with the same color, I know I've got some ears. And I will be getting my yellow ochre involved, but for right now, we're just kind of working these basic values, okay? Mm. Blocking in is that part where your acrylic painting looks terrible, and it's the part beginners never know is coming. We call it the ugly phase. <laughs> <laughs> it's different than watercolor. If you paint a watercolor, you're used to just sort of a beautiful developing experience. But when you uh, paint an acrylic, you've got to accept that things can be, uh, they can be kind of rough. I kind of arc that a little bit. So we have sort of that nice skull shape on the head that we like so much. Sometimes I might grab a little more brown. It's really okay. Get a little black kind of coming in here between the, the brown and the... And the reason we're doing this is there's a bit of a divot and we're just making sure that we mark where it is. This is how those traceable lines or those sketch lines don't get lost in the process of painting. Mm. We're just making sure we, we're okay here. I might get a little more yellow ochre here just because it's a lighter area. Notice I'm not particularly tidy or worried about any of this. I'm just getting the value and the color down. Why do we do that? Because honestly, you have to do that in acrylic paint. You have to build up. Now I'm going to come down here into yellow ochre. Might add a little bit of white into this mix. I've got this color here, so I might as well take it out over here mm. a little bit. Just sort of curving that out. See, I'm just following the directionality of the fur. If you like the Basset Hound, that's kind of the, the level we're taking this to. Back to my burnt sienna, my cad red, and my cad yellow for my kind of orangey base for fur. Oh, uh, sorry. Hmm. I just... Uh... I think I called her Gummy Girl before. No, me Gummy Girl is a different person. No, there was. There's, no, it's Girl Mummy. There's Girl Mummy. All right. And I just, I was reading it from very far away. Oh, goodness. Well, you know, that's going to happen, guys. I'm super sorry. 
Is it easier to paint when it's flat or on an angle? On an angle. This is much harder. Um, I have, uh, I'm right now uh, house sitting my mom's house while we're waiting to get our uh, paperwork to go to Ireland. And um, I had a little black and brown here. And my mom has her surface angled up and John Little's built a crazy contraption, but it allows her to have it on an angle. And I was like, John, 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 John. you see what she has? That's so very, very good. So I, I definitely, you know, had some feelings about that. Now I'm adding a little black to my brush, but I haven't rinsed out. And you'll notice I'm going to go right into the ear. I'm down through here. And I'm going to come over here, a little black and brown, and also really come right into the ear here. I'm going to get some blue in my brush. And notice how even with the orange, it starts to go gray. That's because ultramarine blue and orange is always going to make a gray. And what's nice about doing that is it kind of creates a unifying color across everything. Hmm. Locking in the dog. Sometimes I actually like the blocked in painting even more than the finished painting. <laughs> There's something about it where you're just painting so fresh. That's really enjoyable. This little stripey's a little more over here. Get a little more black. Wipe off on my paper towel, get a little more black. I'm just kind of shaping that up there at the muzzle. It's a lot to take in. I get it. And now let's get the rest of this kind of with the white. And then we're going to get to be able to check how we're doing. Take a look at it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Be aware that um, this stage of the painting can cause anxiety. <laughs> it just does. That's the three hoot thing. You know, um, sometimes when we're at the three hoot stage, why we're doing the lessons is just to figure out how the construction works and then also to gain confidence in that construction. I'm going to rinse out a little bit. I think I want to bring the uh, brown around a bit. So back to the burnt sienna into my orange. Kind of a bit of a coming back in. Grab a little bit of... Yellow ochre at the back of the ear. Maybe a little bit at the top of the eyes. And then um, I am going to do the nose. I tend to get real detailed on things like noses and stuff and eyes um, and really focus in. But this is the rough dent. So see, it's, it's sort of crazy. And this is when I kind of look at everything and I go, what have we got going on and what do I need to do about it? And also the time I asked John to heat my coffee. Yep. About that time. So I'm going to give everybody a step. Step. Shh. Are, are you guys still here? I hope oh, you're yeah. holding on. Okay. Lots of people. Lots of community loving I have a loving very this. easy one hoot corgi in my beginner acrylic painting course. Just like very few brushes, very few colors. Very beginner, 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 beginner like never painted before friendly. So if you're loving this, but you're not here yet, please do that corgi. Please. Yeah. And you will still have fun painting. Because you can get here. This is a place you can absolutely get. Heat me up, baby. Back to the show. Back to the show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now 
I'm going to kind of work on my nose and my eyes for a little bit. Um, they just tend to be involved things and uh, need a lot of my attention. I'm also going to put on my glasses. And if you'll mute me for a second, I'm going to have a bit of a hiccup. Yes, I am. Getting my detail brushes together. All right. So this is a number four round from Simply Simmons. It's very similar to my number four round from the Art Sherpa line back when we had that. If you have both, I still think the Art Sherpa round number four is slightly better. It just holds a point a little bit better. But this is still, here you go, babe. This is still, I'm so sorry you have to crawl. That is really at our age. That's not okay. <laughs> I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just get some black on the toe of this number four round. That means the tip of the brush right here. And I'm rolling the brush when I load it. And I'm going to pull that lid up. A little thicker here, and then it's going to thin as it comes back a bit. Yes. All right. John is wanting me here. I'll talk to you for a second because John wants me to. He wants to get back with the coffee before I get too detailed, so I can zoom in, so you can really see the work. Um, eyes are. I I feel like one of my specialties. I feel like I have really helped people get good, good, good at eyes. And I think even on a loose painting, sometimes I will get involved in the eyes because it creates such an emotional space within a painting. So you can be loose, 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 loose. And then in the eyes, be very uh, controlled and focused. And it, it really resonates um, for the viewer, for you as the painter. It can create some real intimacy that I personally like. You know what I could do? I could probably, well, no, we're going to say I could probably watch the chat on my phone but this one I'm focused on so I may be distracted <laughs> John's crawling on me again. okay so he's going to come and make sure that the camera's really focused on them to get back into my black here Just really exaggerating that beautiful kind of rise in the eye. Just rather lovely. And I'm going to take a little of my red and my brown and my white. It's kind of like a little peach color. Kind of add a little white on the corners. Now, a lot of this I like to do with a uh, number one liner because it just gives me a lot of control. I'm gonna take a little of my red and yellow and my brown again. Kind of put in this little pupil. Are you zoomed in, baby? Mm -hmm. Yay. You get to hear my kids coming in from the pool. Yeah. I'm trying not to look at that because for whatever reason, when I look at that, I am I think I'm looking at the wrong thing. Yeah. You know, I'll, maybe I'll get you a little monitor like put right here. Yeah. Different little monitors. You could have as many monitors as you want. I can have all the monitors in the world. As long as I can carry them in my backpack. <laughs> get them on a plane in pet portraits there are things to to know are important 
um, the eyes and the nose and the markings on the fur. So if ever you're doing a portrait for a friend or family member or yourself, that's where you want to put your attention and your time in those spaces. And I can always come along here and sort of trim this a bit because the black sort of trims back. And I'm even going to pay attention to what I've got going on, zooming in. And make sure that that's a nice... There we go. Just kind of making sure that we've got good pupil placement. Added a little red to the corner in there just to help see where things are. And I'm just rounding things out. Just making sure that the pupil and the shape of the pupil is exactly what I'm trying to get. I can add a little black to the outer edge of the pupil in that brown. See how that kind of darkens it? All right, let's look at the eyes at this stage. So we've got some placement on the eyes at this stage. I'm going to tilt up. Yeah, that's going to be good. Let's call it a step because that's a lot to get in. Yeah. And what happens next is all dependent on this being anchored in in some way. We can do that. We can step away. We can do that. You can do that. I'm going to grab a tiny little hog brush. So I'm going to grab a tiny little hog brush because it'll give me nice rough strokes, which is good around eyes and things. And I'm going to not wet. I'm going to take it. This is a number four Artony round hog bristle brush. And I'm going to kind of upwardly little water on it. Make some little fur marks. These are little fur remarks. Fur re marks. That's right. Man, that's and I'm going to do so... this a little dark around the eye. I think of it as kind of like eyeshadow at this stage. That, that that statement fell out of the pun tree and hit every branch on the way down. It did, man. I That's what I live for. Now I might get a little bit of my cad yellow on there. And add a little white into it. A little white back at this corner here coming out. A little bit brown. Okay. 
along here and just make sure I've got some nice blending in. So we're just starting to really think about what those eyes um, are shaped as, right? We're just giving it a we're just giving it a beginning thought. A little white into my yellow ochre and burnt sienna, cad red and cad yellow. I may have to come in with my detail brush to get the lid in. That's just, sometimes you've got to detail it in. Get a little of that right there, just on the outside edge. See how we're doing? It's a it's a fussy business. It is. Can but we... it looks so good though. It does look so good. I like when we get deep like this. Uh the 13 days won't be this deep. They're mostly in that two hoot mm. range. We only have a couple three hoots that I throw at you. And they're not even that bad of three hoots because they're on black or they use a technique based thing. So this is like Probably an example of much more challenging in hmm. our in our class list. But if you're ready for it, this is the one. I made an orange here. Come in, I'm gonna tap in a little bit of light into this eye. Get a little brown. Wipe off, get a little black. It's my brown still in there, so it's like a deep brown black. Carly was saying she really loves all the paintings coming up for the 13 days of Halloween. Oh, I'm so excited for them. Yeah, this, this, uh, if you're trying to gauge if you can do it, don't gauge the 13 days of Halloween by this. I would say it's easier than acrylic April, but a little more challenging than beginner's acrylic painting course. That's about the calibration of where I calibrated uh, this year's Halloween. Gotcha. Kind of festivities. I'm going to come in and sort of lighten this up with a little bit of my cad red. If you remember, this was my cad red and cad yellow and uh -huh. a little white mix over here. Yep. I've got a little burnt sand in there too. I'm going to come into that dark brown there and kind of blend that in. It's just, you know, they don't have like white, white eyes. They do have whites of their eyes. Now I can take my blue and my black together and I get kind of this gray, right? I'm going to line in a little gray here. Oh, I'm getting involved in this. That'll happen. Back into my black. Now here I am kind of putting it out in a fan and then I kind of come back like that and that's going to help create that shape. I'm going to check my shape. Sometimes I got to check my own shape. And that's important. You got to be ready to check your own shape. Taking my black here and I'll put it back down for you guys to see. I'm just making sure that the tip around that eye isn't bad. Yeah, kind of put out a little lash layer. It's 
take a little bit of our blue gray in the eye down from the lash. You don't want to put it tucked up to the lash at all. Just want to have it down. We're not going to do quite the white, the wet reflection yet, but you do want to get that in. You want to get that in as much as you can. Going to add some little red in here. Just because it creates uh, some personality and luminousness to the eyes. And that's sort of what we want to do, right? Adding a little bit of the light yellow ochre up here. Maybe a little bit of the red and yellow ochre, burnt sienna, any of that. Just a little bit lighter than the little shadow there. I had some little hairs here. Okay, let's look at that. Sip our coffee and see how we've done so far. So when we get our eyes in and then we come back and we get the rest of the puppy in, we just know we've done good already. Mm -hmm. Is that the eyes are looking so nice. Yeah. The rest of it doesn't take this long. We're getting the hard part out of the way first. Would you like a little step here? Yeah, let's put a step. We'll, we'll step. The eyes will be <laughs> separate steps there. We'll come over and do this other eye with just as much intensity and fortitude and all of that. And then... We'll tie it all together with reflections. And then we'll do the nose again because you got to get that really nailed in. Do you have a sign up link for the um, Lifebook stuff? I do. You do? I do. And the moderator should have it. Huh, we'll the moderator see. should have my direct link. So if you guys can throw uh, my, it's, it's an affiliate link. I get credit for the sign up. So I appreciate it. When you guys do let me get the credit for the sign up. I think that that's in there. Let me see here. I'll scroll up. I think I saw a drop. I'm taking again this number four round hog bristle brush with a dark color. Yeah, so make sure you're. Uh... Mm. Oh, yeah, no, I was making sure here. Am I good? Not good. Yep, you're good. Okay. It's okay to tell if I'm not good. I want to make adjustments if I'm not. Just making sure there's a nice depth of color to all of this. The other place I want to make sure is that right above here where we know we have that like kind of brow. Get a little bit of my brown into my orange over here. Brown into my orange, and I'm kind of blending that out a bit. And a little more over into the yellow ochre. Back the white and yellow there, the yellow ochre and the white. But what am I making sure of, babe? I was making sure they've got the links in here in, in chat. Oh, okay. Adding a little highlight over the, the uh, little eyebrow. Because that's like, that's huge on dogs, right? Notice that I'm just very lightly on this brush. And the brush's roughness is helping me get this fur in, doesn't it? The brush makes that much more possible. Get a little more burnt sienna on there, and yep, it just is. It's my friend. In that inner corner, because I know the hairs will have to be over something dark there. So that's like what we're constantly doing is we're playing in that space. 
I'm going to get back into this was the cad yellow, a little burnt sienna, and some white. Add a little more of the darker red there. And then I'm going to come in and get a little of my blue gray. Get a little blue in the inside edge. There's just a little bit of a blue cast to that. And I don't want to lose that. What was the D Artigiani brushes you were talking about? Okay, so this is Raphael's Art D Artigiani. D, D I always say it wrong. And it's been explained to me so many times. Uh, D'Artigny brush, it is hog bristles, but you can, if you've got budget concerns, use Simply Simmons. They're also pretty quality in budget. Ah. Come here, I'm taking my, it's my all terrain blue and my Mars black. Oh, the close up matters there. Yeah. Oh, there's too much water on the brush. So when that happens to me, what I do is I'm going to come dab it out. Everything underneath, it's dry so I can get away with it. What happens sometimes is when you rinse these little brushes out, a drop, a hidden drop, comes in and uh, the, sneaks up he, on your the painting. The hidden drop. It's the hidden sneaky, drop. Sneaky, sneaky. It is. It's a very sneaky little drop. So I've got to really kind of watch for that. All right, so we've got some inner kind of little eye things happening here. We don't want to lose that. A little bit of blue and white again. I'm going to pull some little dark hair kind of markings out here. They're not eyelashes. It's just. Highlights. Yeah. Well, more like low lights. Lift up to make sure that I can see it. Coming with some very dark color here. I might even get a slightly bigger brush involved. Yeah, I'm going to get might. my number four Simply Simmons brush involved here just a little bit, just so I'm not having to piece out. on the toe there i'm letting it kind of make the fur by uh being uh, open there we go you guys doing okay yes i think so all right see we're getting it it's just there's some work here sometimes there's just work to be done nothing to do but to do it Maybe a little kind of yellow ochre here, a little bit. So number four, Simply Simmons. A 
from the white over to the yellow ochre. Back into some burnt sienna. Yeah, I think that answered the question on the brushes. Oh, did it? Yeah. Oh, good. Just putting a little bit of a shadow down here underneath the eye. I will come and define it more, but just knowing where everything is sometimes is super helpful. You know? Mm hmm All right. Back into what I was doing. Go a little uh, cad yellow and yellow oxide together with some white. A little black on there, a little brown and black. Mm. See, because it's sad. Is it? Yeah, it's sad. So it has to have kind of a, a, a little sad eyebrow. So we got to create the, the shading in the fur. I'm going to grab a little burnt sand on black around that eyebrow. We have to. Have to. Have to. It does add a lot of... Uh, add a little white to it. Emotional? Right. And when that was the point of painting this particular cutie pie was the sadness. Yeah. A little white over to my yellow ochre again. I'm going to look at this real fast. This is coming in pretty well. So let's get back into some details in the eye itself. As you do. As you do. As some of us do. Let's take our cad red and our cad yellow back into that kind of wonderful orange. And let's get a burnt sienna into that. You can brighten that eye. Isn't that mm. a nice brighten? It does. It pops up. Now I'm going to take my black and my burnt sienna. Such cute eyes. It's so cute. Kind of on the inside. Make sure we got a little shadow happening here. That's lovely. Mm -hmm. I'm go a little more orange into it. Tapping that kind of up and down that lighter value. Just to create a little light in the eye. dark orange back here. A little blue and black and white. All right. Now I'm going to get a little more white on my brush. And tap out a little bit there. A couple there. Let's come here. Just 
a little bit. Maybe a little bit on the inside of the eye there. All right, let's step back and look at it. Oh, yeah, that looks nice. It's very sad. You see? It's very sad. So sad. So sad. So sad. So tired, but so sad. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say we're back at our Basset Hound level of eye, wouldn't you guys? Yeah. All right. My goodness. Is this a step? This is a step, man. This is a step. And <laughs> pat yourself on the back and take a break and congratulate yourself. Make sure you're showing, showing lots of empathy and acceptance in your as part of learning like an artist. Right now, you did a big thing. You thought about big, complicated things about reflections and shape and small details that create huge impact. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's hard to do. And you did it. Yeah. All right. Let's continue on. Next step is nose. <laughs> Next step is nose. <laughs> Can you meet me for a second? Uh, I'm yep. There you are. No hiccups yet? Okay. Maybe you'll come. No. Oh. Right, <laughs> no <here>. hiccups coming. <laughs> I mean, this whole lesson. Horrible for all of us. <laughs> all right. I'm going to use a cool tool. This is a quarter inch angle brush. Uh, it's in the Catalyst line. It's by Princeton uh, Brush. Catalyst is a very firm acrylic brush, and they have a short handle, which you may like. Mm. I'm going to take my blue and my black together. I'm going to come across the front of this nose. And down. Blue and black together, front of the nose and down, and then you get a little a little white into it. Start to come over the top. Over the top. It's over the top. So what we're trying to do is just make sure that we have the basic shape of the nose correct before we even worry about our details. And then I'm going to kind of come back. I might even be a little more brown. Let's get some brown in that. Yeah. Because there's a dark uh, where the hair is sort of thin around the nose. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that I've got that covered. Right here down to the muzzle. I'm really enjoying painting today, guys. I know it's a bit long, and I'm sure John is tired of the seat. No, this is nice. But I just really... Everyone's enjoying this quite a bit. Every once in a while, I really like to paint a dog. That's, it's, a dog it's a dog day. It's a corgi day. It's a corgi day. Now I'm going to come here, and I'm adding a little white and blue to my brush. And at the top here, I'm going to add a bit of a highlight. It's going to kind of soften and then come across here. So it's not the whole nose. Mm. See what a weird little, that's how we kind of hint at the shape. Down the side, there's a bit of a reflection. A little bit. Just the smallest amount where the nostrils are. Then a little more white into the blue. A little more black. Got to get the white out of there. Hmm. 
Yeah, Rebecca's having trouble finding those brushes. Which ones? The the uh, Raphael D'Artigny. Um, on the store. Can can I say that Rebecca, you should check back with us soon. Yeah, we are hearing that complaint, and we're gonna solve we'll have it. Have an answer for you. It's not a complaint. Soon. That's feedback, and I appreciate feedback. I'm sorry, I even framed it for two seconds as a complaint because I don't hear it as one. One could say we have a solution. Feedback. We're working, we're a solution-oriented yeah. group. We're looking for solutions. I am working on being super much more careful with my words. Do you know what I mean? I do. I'm adding a little bit, kind of like coming back here. It's pretty good. I don't mind it. It's a nice little nose, right? Now I'm going to take that hog brush that I had. Mix my yellow ochre with my burnt sienna together fairly well. Yeah. Maybe a little black. And then some white. I'm going to make sure this brush has very little moisture in it. I'm just creating light little hairs. Yeah. Coming around. Just light little hairs. Yeah. Might get some of my gray even. But we're still allowing for that darkness in that skin. Maybe gray with a little bit more white. I've got grass coming over this, but it doesn't mean that I don't want to have, you know, some quality here. I can't take it too far because I've got to really put this hair in to layer the muzzle over it, but I've got to get that much going just to get that in. Now, that is by far the hardest part of the whole project. Yeah. Right? Everything else is just sort of layers. I would say from here, it kind of down roots to a two hoot. Just layers of fur. Now we're just layers of fur, which we can handle. Lots of ways to do this, layers of fur, lots of tools place? to do layers of fur. This is definitely step. a step place. All the steps. <laughs> making it a better picture for the steps. What? Do you more centered in your little rotatey thing down there? Okay. You can pull it towards you some more. There you go. You have more of it. Okay. How are you guys liking this so far? I know it's a big project. Again, if you need a one hoot hoot corgi, we got that. So simple. This is multi hoot like for under the... an hour class. But this is this is hoots. It's a hoot. You're learning. It's a hoot. So much learning. So many hoots. Well, so there's a couple hoots. hoots. There's a there's a few hoots. A, it's, it's, it's a hoot and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're down to how we paint fur and how the layers of that fur um, really tell us the depth of where things are. Like, you might have wondered, like, why haven't we done grass? Well, we've really got to paint the dog to get the grass blades up here, don't we? Hmm. Right, that's going to kind of come in with the flowers. And we have to paint distant fur to do the fur that's more in focus. The focus fur. Focus. Focus, focus, focus. All right. Now, guys, remember, this company has a brush like this. Simply Simmons, Hog Bristles, ha they have, and you would get like a six round mm. would be your equivalent. This one is a number eight, D'Artigny, D-A-R-T-I-N-G-Y by Raphael Brush. You should be able to find them at Jerry's Art of Rome. You should be able to find them at 
um, Texas Art Supply. And just... Dick Blick. Check back with us soon. Dick Blick. Dick Blick. And check back with us soon, because we will... We're going to hook you guys up. Soon we'll have, like... So soon. You, you should be tuning into our, like... A newsletter, which is part of our website. So if you're mm-hmm. on our, we- if you're if you're a member of our website, if you want the soon as soon, you got to be a patron. Yeah, patrons are the best way to get all the inside. Soon as soon, if you're like, no, I need free soon newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's put in some uh, distant hair. <coughs> so I'm going to take my um, phthalo blue and my Mars black together, and I might put a little uh, burnt sienna into it. All right. And some white, and we're kind of making it's a gray, but it's a soft gray. And I'm gonna on the toe of this brush and talk about some distant fur. It's not in focus, which is good for us. We're just implying that it's here. And an implication in art is we don't paint it in sharp contrast or detail so that it feels a little out of focus. That helps a little. I might add a little more white into it, not tons, but just a little. Highlight some. Now I'm going to get my yellow ochre over here. Maybe even a little more ochre. Hmm. So I come back more into the uh, burnt sienna. And get some Mars Black to kind of shade that down. Oh. Kind of creating that shaping around the face. Burn Sienna and Mars Black. And a little into the burnt sienna and Mars black. Mm-hmm. <laughs> John's John's so nice. He acts like that's an interesting thing to hear. But <laughs> it is. Well, you got to get the paint. You know, mix it in there, right? I want kind of to take some from the corner of the eye, just a little bit, you know. Back into yellow ochre. I'm just. You don't want to be the. I don't want to what? You don't want to have the boring paints. I might have a boring paint. I don't know. I, I wouldn't be a good judge of that. You guys get to judge me in that way. I don't think I should. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of this again and add some white to it. I think it's interesting. Do you? I think you're interesting. We're just making sure that that fur just feels fur. Hmm. Just a little furry. The fur should feel fur. And again, remember we have some flowers back here. So some of this we're not really that going to be that lost on. Right. I'm going to make sure I got this angle kind of correct. So I'm going to tilt up so I see it a little better. Basically what it is, is that kind of coming off this part of the face is a little bit in shadow. And then it's got a little highlight.
All right, maybe a little highlight there. So we're getting there. Hold Oof. on there a little bit. Getting there. Getting there. You know, got to do that to do anything else, right? Now I got to get inside the ear, too. In the ears. Maybe a little more black-brown. I'm just inside this ear. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. Got to talk about this back fur bit, which we know is our burnt sienna, cad red, cad yellow kind of color. Back fur. Back fur. Back for bit. Back for bit. <laughs> it's almost like it's a little colloquialism. I'll be back for a bit. And I'm going to be just kind of light with this because, again, it's in the distance, right? So that doesn't have to be our most in focus ever, ever, ever. But that doesn't mean that I don't want it to feel like... See how my brush stroke flicking back and the fact that the brush is a little bit messy in and of its, its personality helps it do the fur? I do. I have a lot of videos on fur. If some of these concepts feel overwhelming, please do one of the videos on fur because once you see the concept, you'll be like, oh, oh, I totally understand what we're doing here. Now, when you, the light source of this, we're, it seems like this is sort of like ambient skylight. I would say this is a cloudy day with uh, probably about a noontime scape. So it doesn't have a strong light, but you can see that the shadow is under the, the dog and doesn't particularly skew one way or the other. And that the shadow is under the flowers, but doesn't skew one way or the other kind of implies an overhead light. Right. But diffused. Diffused. So ultramarine, Mars black, and a little burnt sienna. Let's get into the white. Now, I have a corgi, or she's currently being babysat while we're in all this transition. But her little fur, actually I should correct it, my eldest has a corgi that yes. I'm allowed to look at. And that visits it, us. That then is allowed to visit us. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> right, but fur directionality, they have beautiful coats. And so the directionality of this fur matters. I'm not putting a lot of pressure. I'm not smashing the brush down into the canvas. And the reason that I'm not is so that it can do these little fur marks fairly well. Because right? that's what we're trying to do. Whoa. Sorry. Wrong button. The reason I'm not using a grainer, which would be, is a really wonderful fur brush at this stage, is because I want this to feel a little out of focus. Ah. And the flagging, that's the split ends of the hog bristles, do that really well. I'm also, the skill of layering fur like this is a lot like doing mermaid scales. Oh. You got to do the furs back and come forward. It's always about finding those plans. And again, remember, we've got flowers here, so you're not in too much trouble. Back into a darker fur for over here. This is more in shadow. Oh, Christine is studying art and design at the university in UK. Oh, fantastic. How are you loving it, Christine? A little backwards looking. What do you love best about studying in your field? Mm, be a little art ambassador uh you know uh it it sometimes it's implied 
within families and sometimes even publicly in the world that having an arts degree is a waste of everybody's time. <laughs> and I just want you to know that it's not. It's why the whole world is pretty. And uh, I mean, we used to value generational work, hmm. creative work. If you look at, at, at how long it used to take to make anything, it could take generations to complete a project. And we used to think it was worth that. And that's back when, you know, we didn't have internet. So it must have been very important. But sometimes you get a, you get a little picked on as an artist, I think. Like, you know. But I think it's one of the best things to get a degree in. Yeah, I like it. So ambassador for us. We're almost through this layering. I'm going to add a little bit of a lighter area here. And then I'm going to come up here and add a little bit of a lighter area up here. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. We're getting there. You really are. Sometimes you have to rinse out your brush and reload because it's just, it starts, to, acrylic paints, uh, beauty is also its hardest thing. It dries fast. Sometimes you have to kind of come in and be like, I see you drying and I'm going to. All right, now we have this through here, and then we will have finished this step. So I'm taking my uh, brown, black, blue again, making gray loading up. I'm going to come to the outside edge of my ear with a little black uh, kind of burnt sienna and the red and brown and make sure that this is also sort of flagged out like it has uh, little hairs. I don't want it to be, you know, clipped. A lot of people you will find in your life will have a lot of opinions on you doing art, even as a hobby. Studying art, just having anything to do with art in any way. It's just their nature. They can't help it. It's important, though, to keep in mind, I'm going to grab a little bit of my burnt sienna here. Yeah. And I'm going to actually kind of work this in a bit. A little further. It's important to remember that um, just like non-medical people don't really understand a medical degree and couldn't really give uh, somebody, like say you were a radiologist, they couldn't really give you career advice. <laughs> right. Non-art people really can't give you career advice or ho hobby advice. They don't, really, they don't really understand it well enough to weigh in on it. So try not to let them rent any space. Come in there and just make sure that there's some, some work there. You're almost done. All right. Burn Sienna and Cad Red, Cad Yellow. Just because we know we're not gonna, we're going to have so many flowers over it doesn't mean we don't want to take this moment to practice it anyways. I grab a little bit of the black and brown coming through, kind of shading the head, right? Oh, I think I'm going to get some of my yellow ochre involved. That's nice. Tipping that little part of the ear hair with a little bit of yellow ochre, isn't it? 
Can't get the other ear yet, but I can get into this one. Grab a little white. Now I'm going to come in and get a little yellow ochre on my brush. I haven't rinsed it, so I've got the burnt sienna, Mars black, a little cad red, yellow ochre. A little white into it coming forward. Because, you know, it's laying down. So it's, it's laying down. It has fur all squished. Fur gets squished when they down. Get a little brown black here. It's amazing how as you move forward, you can kind of see how it layers. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's call that a step because that was a lot and we're whipping through now. We're making headway. Let's see how we're doing. I love it. Step 10. All right, I think I want to balance out a little bit the fur on both sides, even though it's not totally that. It's just for the painting itself. All right. You're giving a little evenness just, so that it looks that we like the way it looks a little better. Yeah, I, I'll do that on occasion. I will be like, oh, hey, and that's okay to do. I'm going to be like, I think you need to be a little more this way. Grab a little yellow ochre. Just making sure that we've got nice balancing. Before we even add grass. All right. I'm still in this round brush. Still in it. Still in it. So it's my burnt sienna, cad red, and cad yellow. Oh, that's much brighter. Much brighter. And again, I, I, we know that we're going to be over this with flowers. We know that. But that doesn't mean we don't want to get those layers in. A little bit of the cad yellow rinsed my brush. Come up into the orange. Burnt sienna. Burnt sienna. Maybe a little burnt sienna and black. Right, I'm gonna kind of just make sure the edge of that. Oh yeah, there. Oh, over there. The edge of this ear is a little furry. A little white on that just to make sure that that curve of that ear look at that curve of that ear that's important uh -huh. right into my gray color a little burnt sienna and black A 
Coming in here, a little burnt sienna and black in the center, shading it up. Right. We know we've got flowers coming. Yes. So we're not under a lot of pressure. It's just an opportunity for us to practice what we do. Mm -hmm. Into the yellow ochre. See, the little stripe wasn't centered on the face. Now it's it's easy sometimes when things are like that to lose what we actually have going on. A little white into the mix. A little white on the outside. Just shade in the face. Mm -hmm. Coming around. Like these are little highlights in my yellow ochre. That's looking good. I'm happy with today. It is really turning out nice. Just super happy with today. Now, I'm doing what's called localized color, which means instead of just glazing with a shadow under, right? Uh -huh. I'm just taking the colors that are in this space and darkening them. Because I know I'm going to have flowers there. And they create a little darkness, don't they? Yeah. I'm also putting a little bit of a kind of shadow under, and then I'll come back over to my yellow ochre. Kind of highlight some. Super cute. Just pulling a little highlight down the side of the face. Grab a little yellow ochre. And then back into the white and yellow ochre. There we go. I'm loving today. I might get a little black here and brown. Yeah. Just making sure that when I come back with the flowers, and I may still have to put more shadow under the flowers. I'm just trying to get that shape. Now, I have rinsed this brush out pretty thoroughly. I know what my white hair mix is, which is my ultramarine blue, Mars black, and burnt sienna, and titanium white. The directionality of the fur and the color do matter. But the center line is based on the nose, not the stripe. And that's the hard, that's the challenge here. Well, it's a little hard to get 
I can switch down, if this brush is giving me any grief, I can switch down to a smaller brush. See what I just did? So this is the four. No, this is the six, and this was the eight. This only matters in this brush line. Other brush lines will have different sizes. See how that just kind of fixes that? And we put a little hair up the, the muzzle there. Be the lightest around the nose. And I'll wipe off sometimes just to make sure I'm not too heavy in the paint. Is everybody doing okay, John? I feel like I'm being boring, so... No, you're painting fur. It's directional. It's, it's very directional. And I'm watching you paint fur, which is not directional. <laughs> it is not directional. It is observational. John sometimes literally watches paint dry. My job. It's to frame so it. Make sure it's in focus and well. I lit. just wish we would be out socially sometime, and you that people would be like, "What do you do for a living? Watch paint dry." I'm more than my more than watch paint dry. I chronologue paint drying <laughs> in a way that only I mean, like uh, back into our white fur mix, which is again burnt sienna, Mars black, ultramarine blue, and titanium white, in a way that only like Ken Burns would understand. Yes, I feel like. If we ever got sat at a dinner table with Ken Burns, we could relate on a little <laughs> level. I'm not saying we are the call, no, like, I'm not, I'm not comparing crumb, us. I'm not like an American uh, short filmmaker. Icon. Yeah. But about, like, just chronicling, like, stuff. <laughs> now, over here, I'm going to kind of take this a little more in rows even though the grass is going to be over this and the reason that i'm doing that is because there's kind of whiskers in there and by capturing that feeling of that it will help get a little yellow in there Sometimes there's little spots on the muzzle, and I don't want to not capture that, right? Can't not capture it. Just love doing this. How is he looking? Are you guys having fun? I know it's a big oh, project. Yeah, I think everyone's really enjoying this. They, they the comments are wonderful. Uh, let's see how I can I can I can read you something right here to a uh, to a P to to help settle. Well, I don't the, need to be a P. I'm not Krakatoa. No, no, dear. I was trying. I wasn't saying a piece. I wanted to, to try to settle your artist nerves of oh, concern. Oh, thank you. That's what I was trying to get to. Well, I just can't see the chat, so I don't. Right. That's what I was thinking. So let's see here. Judy Lynn says. Hi, Judy. I just keep saying to myself, this is crazy amazing. Not boring, Cinnamon. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, now, again, 13 days will be easier than this. Even the crow, which looks, the crow will be the one that everyone thinks is going to be super hard and is surprisingly easier because it's on a black canvas. And then you guys are going to be like, that went along really well. Wow. Mm. Car Carolyn's been on a journey. Oh, tell me. So she was, uh, she's, you know, she painted with us for a while, but it was like three years ago. And so she had to take a little break. And in that three years, she's had two kids. Oh, my goodness. So there's a, there's some stuff happening. Congratulations. You have grown as an artist in ways you did not expect. Reasons to paint that you didn't expect. 
It brings so much creativity into our spirits. That you did not expect. But then so do pets, so do life experience. I am not, I am one of those moms that loves motherhood, but I also recognize that life is fulfilling in a pl- like a multitude of ways. Yeah. Right? Yes. Uh, when it's great, it's terrific. And if it's for you, that's wonderful. But it's also okay if it's not. When you guys see me gushing about my kids online, it's that's just my experience. But I, I totally understand that we are not a monolith human beings. <laughs> We're like a rhombus. I don't know what shape we are, but it's not a good unified shape. Right. All right. I'm just building up that color. Just adding a little bit of white highlights there. I'm just, okay, I'm loving it. Okay, I feel like we did good. See how he looks overhead. Fantastic. And, and tip it. I'm happy, happy. It's super Sherpa. It is. It's very Sherpa. So look what we can do. I think we can make you big now. <laughs> can we make you big now? Psh. I think we need to, before we hit, the, did we already hit the step? Nope. If we didn't, I think we need to add a little highlight. Uh, here. Are we, we're not done. This is just stepping. No, we're not done. We got to add flowers. Okay. So I was going to make you big. Like, I thought you were like. I, I just want to make sure that we exaggerate the uh, eyebrows there a little bit. Because worry. Worry. Because worry. Okay. Now we can step. We can step. step. Now we can step. So I'm going to paint some loose lilacs, but I'm also going to add in primroses and uh, lily of the valley. Uh, so for you guys that are painting this as a memorial painting, that will really allow you to have that symbolism there um, that I think will be relatable. And I really appreciate that suggestion. Holy, let me straighten that out so you can get the step. All right. Flowers. I'm going to really do with two tools. I'm going to do uh, filberts and rounds. These are filberts. These are the ones that are rounded and rounds are like this. And I do that because they just lend themselves to organic shapes. I'm going to paint them in the kind of loose way that I painted the fur. That way our focus is again our nose. You know? Yeah. And, uh, and I'll be, we'll be putting in. It'll be good for grass too. So if you're ready, let's go. <laughs> mm, I'll actually use the smaller filbert. This is uh, an Isabe Isacryl uh, number four. You can find it in a Simply Simmons. It will work. Yeah. So don't panic. And again, we're going to have uh, a way for you to get brushes and all kinds of things very soon. Now my, mm, I'm going to put out a little... Diox purple. Just a little bit. And yeah. I think I'm going to also put out a little quinacridone magenta. I may put out thalo blue if I need it. Sounds good. I will try not to put any colors out that I don't need. So we'll see how we go. It's on a need to paint basis. It's on a need to paint basis. So my first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, ultramarine uh, blue and my docks purple and kind of mix them together. And get kind of a... Let's get some magenta into that too. Maybe a more magenta purple. I think that's a little closer to that. And we're going to come here. Right at this corner of this ear. And using the corners or sides of the brush, we're going to make just... We don't 
when you have flowers that are built up of many multitudes of little flowers, you have a couple of ways to paint them. One is every single petal. It's a good way to go. And another is you paint the shape of everything and then just capture different values. Just a little purples. Yeah, so right now, quinacridone magenta, docks purple, ultramarine blue. And then I'm just trying to capture the shape of the bunches, not each individual flower. Right. Let's add a little white into the mix. Little blue. Notice I'm just touching, making just small just little marks. Bit. Yeah. We have a uh, very detailed flower paintings. If you want to get into that, that is also okay. Nothing wrong with it. I'm adding different values of light. And different values of blue. And that will help me Create the feeling of the flowers. Flower feelings. Sometimes there's this uh, feeling in painting that if you do one area detailed, you've got to do all areas detailed. And I think one of the best things to do is to get away from that feeling. Yeah. And, you know, play with what's in focus and what is not. It's pretty lovely. Little trick. I'm going to take a little of my green and burn sienna and quite a lot of my cad yellow. And peak little pops of this sort of very bright saturated green in the purple. I'm just touching it. I turn my brush a lot in my hand. Ah. Now the white, I'm actually going to just do ultramarine blue. Let's come over here to kind of my off white color. Now, even as we're painting the flowers, right, and we're painting their shapes, that's, we can still paint the gesture of the clusters. Right. That doesn't have to go away. Hmm. Carolyn was, was like... A little I, more gray. It's been a long time since I painted it. I wonder if my paint's still good. Um, it should be good for about seven years if you've stored it well and capped it. Uh, most most companies will guarantee it uh, seven years. If it's student, it, it might be less. Um, but generally, acrylic paint is good until it's exposed to extreme temperature or air. Yeah. I've had some very old acrylic paint still be usable. Oh, I like that rather much. Yeah, it looks really nice.
Just picking kind of the gray. I was going to say, you're getting all introspective there. I was getting all introspective there. Just kind of enjoying the process. The flowery process. The flower process is a fun process. I'm not going to lie. It's fun. This is, this is like, I work very hard to get to this part of the painting, which is my favorite part of <laughs> the like painting. To, yeah. Grab some green there. That'll be an unexpected surprise, green and yellow. Coming back through. Maybe really green and yellow. Oh, that is nice. Yeah, I do like it. All right, I rinsed off and I'm loading up some white white. So you were just capturing little bits of light. Yeah. Contrast makes a lot of this work. It does. In the fact that I let the brush shape kind of imply the flowers, I think also works really well. This will be the right answer for many of you, but it might not be the right answer for all of you. And that's the part where we're listening like an artist. If doing something a particular way gives you anxiety, don't do it that way. Yeah. I know that's flippant, but seriously. That's, it's good to listen to yourself that way. Because the best way to grow as an artist is to paint. And if you end up trying to do things because it was shown to you that way or is explained to you that way and it makes you miserable, you won't paint again. Oh, yeah. So it's much more important that you paint again. You know. I'm making a very light purple here. See how light it is? Man, this looks so good. It just looks nice. Nice, nice, nice. It does. Got to get a little bit of that bright green again. Don't want too much water in it. Just little bits. A little bit here and there. A little bit here and there. I'm going to load up a little yellow. Touch a couple places with a little kiss of yellow. Oh. Uh, I do that because when you're painting how a flower feels, right? No, like pay attention to what you notice. Like I really notice the yellow centers of the white flowers. Okay. So I need to add little dots of yellow. Because it stands out to me that it's there, but it doesn't exist in the lilacs. Now, I want to dry this before I try to add a primrose or a lily of the valley or grass. So let's dry that and come back in another step. Okay. <gasps> Yay. We can step again. Steppy step. We got this. This is so good. So while she's drying out, I'm a muter. Just, uh, 
She's uh, she's talking about changing canvas sizes in the middle of things. That happens though. Just you know, this one turned out really good though. The eyes, the eyes are so good. They turned out. They can see you. They're looking up at you. Hello. The eyes. You ready for a step there? I am. Look at that. We got the steps. All right. <sighs> gonna try to primrose. Gonna try. Try. Gonna try. Gotta try. Now, first, interestingly enough, I'm gonna load up this filbert with some white. We'll see how this works. And I feel like I could tuck one of them in here. Gotta make sure that I've got control. This is going to be kind of a round flower. It kind of comes in towards that center. All right. As soon as I have that in, I'm going to come in and get a little of my, I'm going to wipe off my brush and get just a little bit of my pure pink. Come over here. I'm loading some pink on my brush. Got a little white in it, but I'm going to come over here. And make a similar round flower using the shape of the filbert. So we've got a couple that are a little bit in detail yeah. and then a couple that are just implied. I've tipped the brush with white again. And kind of capture the edges of the petal here. Just a little bit. A little bit of white on the pet. Again, even those that are implied, though, I do want to capture a little bit of that white on there. Just so we know that they're related to each other in some kind of a way. Now, I'm going to put this down, and I'm going to get my round brush. This is my number four round. And I'm going to add just a little bit of a lily of the valley over here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, my off, my purple can be my off white. Actually, maybe this one I'll make in my green. I'm just making a little tapping thing so I know where I'm. making little bells. So that's what we're going to be painting, our little bells. And I've got a little green in my yellow. I mean, a, a little green in my white. That's pretty nice. All right, let's, uh, actually it doesn't need to be dry. Probably better that it's not. And so we'll, uh, we will dry in a minute, but right now I think. Do you need a step or is this good? I think, let's call it a step and then we'll come in and do the next layer. And I may dry it. Let's dry it.
Okay, you dry. She's gonna dry here real quick. While we're on this step. Oh, take long. She'll dry fast. Okay. Okay. All right. We're going to take a little of our yellow and red, our cad red and our cad yellow. We're going to loosely mix, which means we don't thoroughly mix them together. I'm going to just put them in a little star around the flower. I get a little more red in here towards that center. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of maybe put a little yellow implied center there. Go ahead and there pull out a little yellow and some white. Hmm? So I was just getting the camera a little framed better for him. Just a little yellow and white there just to create interest. Maybe a little red at the center. There we go. And then potentially, if you're feeling super cheeky, a little green at that center, too. Ah. If you're feeling cheeky. Now, as I come on the outer side, and I'm going to open it. There we go. Same brush, round brush here. Uh-huh. I'm going to just paint a brighter bell on top. See how that creates the bell? Yeah. And then, and then, maybe a little yellow. And a bell or two. Uh. Add a little yellow green, kind of connected to it. It's looking pretty good. Now, while I'm here and I'm looking, I'm definitely thinking I'm going to take some white on the tip of this brush. Tap out a little bit of a reflection on Pupper's nose. Oh, yeah. Just to let that be a little bit wetter. Think that's nice. We gotta finish up the grass. Mm. Should we call it a step, or we could do it in the same I, step? What's up to you? I have it. I have a step ready. Let's do a step. Let's step up the grass. Is the last step. There's the last step. Look at this. This is just lovely. Now we're really in the grass, right? Uh -huh. So, and we really want to paint that because we're so sad that we've really laid down into ground. Oh. Right? So we want to make sure that we capture that. All right. I'm going to take my burnt sienna and my phthalo green together. And my filbert. This is the number six filbert. 
and make a series of kind of messy little... Random grassy strokes. Yeah, because grass is a little messy, isn't it? I might even put in a little burnt sienna kind of peeking out here and there in the ground. Just burn sienna and thalo green mm -hmm. at this stage. We're just making a deep green and we're using the brush to make a very kind of not wild grass, but definitely not manicured grass. Lawn grass. Maybe edge of garden grass. Edge of garden grass. Comfortable dog grass. A good place to lay if one was feeling kind of low. I'm going to grab a little bit of my burnt sienna and my cad right here and tuck that in. And I feel like those little pops will feel like earth showing through. Yeah. And so it's sort of worth it. I'm going to rinse this out. I'm going to add quite a lot of green to it. Quite a lot. I mean yellow to it. Cad yellow. Quite a lot of cad yellow. And we're going to highlight some of these blades. Ah, I see. Like the light's catching them. The last of the grass. That's the last of the grass. And we've got a little something we've got to do under the flowers. We're going to have to do a glazing color because the localized color didn't go dark enough. But I will get to it after. Now, if you had a grass comb or a grainer, you could use those? You could absolutely use those. It would give you um, a fuller set of grass. It wouldn't look fuller. like this. It wouldn't look like blades of grass kind of loosely on the ground here. I'm going to add a little white to that green and white. You can see that we're highlighting little bits of something, but not everything. Yeah. A little grass. I am going to take my black and I'm going to thin it a lot with water. You could also use glazing medium if this part is hard. And I'm going to come under my flowers a bit. I'm choosing the black in a glaze because it doesn't take away completely the color that is present. Oh yeah, it looks nice. Alright. And while I'm here and looking, I'm going to take my filbert. I'm going to grab a little yellow into my pink and a little white. Mm, 
Maybe not. I just wanted to have more uh, hmm. dimensionality. Sometimes I'll look at something and I'll be like, it, it just gets me, guys. These last little touches. And actually, no, I'm glad I'm doing it now. It looks really good, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad I'm doing it now. Because I've got dark pink and then, you know, the lighter pink and that's nice dimensionality in the flower and... Yeah. Come in around the center. So it's always okay. Like, if you're like, man, I really want to paint that more, it's okay to do that. I'm just making sure I don't have a lot of water in my brush hidden. Oh, thank you for all the stickers, everyone. Hey, does it, uh... I'm going to just add a little highlights here. Is it Bug's birthday today? Is it Jenna Bug's birthday? I, there's some... Is some... it the Bug's birthday? Are they having a birthday? If they are, happy birthday. There's a, there's some celebration happening here. <sighs> oh, uh, I, th I think what it is is that there's a party because it, they're, they're, the Bug and Sarah gave uh, stickers oh, and Heather Well, thank stickers. you, the Bug and Sarah. And I was just, I, and, and, yeah, I, and. <laughs> And Heather and and everybody else who, and who else Karen and all the guys who've supported us in chat today. I just wanted to make sure I was like not not like, not missing. missing something important. Yeah, I was like there were little birthday party things going on. I was like, is there a birthday? And they were just having a good party for everyone who's giving the stickers. So thank you. I'm gonna make a bright light yellow green and use my monogram liner to put a signature here. For those of you that came to paint corgis, it's so nice to meet fellow corgi lovers. If you came to paint uh, to honor the life of Queen Elizabeth II, and this was your um, time to take and create a memorial for that, thank you so much for joining me. Mm. Thank you very, very much for joining me for that. I hope this accomplished what my intended goal was. <laughs> yeah. Which is to... Uh, Help us think about the person. You know, sometimes we think about the job. Yeah. And there's also a person behind the job. And I think that um, when people are, this is my, now I don't think I'm famous. This is not why I have this relatability. But here's my two cents on this. I think when people are very known and famous and uh, are in the world and impactful, um, there is kind of a thing where we forget that there are people behind those you know, the job or uh, the fame. Mm. And, but there always is, isn't there? Yeah. There's just always a regular person uh, being a regular person uh, behind all of that. So that's why the Corgi kind of worked for me for this, was just to remember the human being. Mm. Somebody that we all knew for an incredibly long time, my whole life, my whole life so far. So you're looking at me funny. No, no. No. Just... Okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, thank you so much for joining me today. The 13 days of Halloween starts Tuesday. All much easier than this. <laughs> it will just be such a cake ride after this. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you, Ananiesel, really soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>